Are you looking to start your own business? Millions of brothers have turned to eBay to escape the rat race. Become your own boss and get the Power Seller Research eBook. It's a comprehensive, step-by-step -step guide that explains how to start an eBay business. The website is PowerSellerResearch.com. Again, that's PowerSellerResearch.com. Uh, what's there to say, brother? You say the truth? Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, we're here for you, man, and we love your show. But I do have a little comment. Um, I was looking at the uh, L.A. Times earlier this week, and it was funny for me to see a dating advertisement ad on the business section out of all of the uh, sections of the newspaper. And it was just funny for me that uh, that it, it says that uh, 9s and 10s, uh, you can find your 9s and 10s, at this way, at this uh, dating site, at this advertising ad, and uh, it's in the it's in the business section. So it goes to say, it goes to show that everything you say, Tom, is true. Uh, this was, wait, here. yeah, they say you can find nine and ten females. Uh, I don't know if it says nine and ten females, but it does say you can find your nine and ten. Business is usually more directed towards men, so yeah, I mean, you put one and one together. Guess what? They're catering to men. You can find your nine and ten in the business section. Well, of course, for rich people. Wow. And uh, you can find your the love of your life, I guess. Well, you don't have to be rich to read the business section. Do they require a net worth statement or anything like that? I don't know, Tom, but, uh, I mean, how many people read the business section? And uh, for me, the business section is usually for people that, you know, uh, they're out there with money and, and they have an interest in stocks. And, uh, and you know, it goes to show me or, or me, I put one and one together. And, uh, well, but, uh, don't people know that uh, if a woman's reading the business section, she's not a 9 or a 10? Well, I, obviously, Tom, women are not reading the, the, the business section, let alone the newspaper. Well, what is a 9 or a 10 is reading People magazine. She's not reading the business section. Exactly, Tom. But, uh, Tom, one more thing before I go. Uh, your word, or, Tom, you yourself are human, just like the rest of us, and you will pass one day. Tom, we need a book. Your word needs to keep on going. And it's about time we have a new Bible. We're getting a lot of requests for that. Yes, Tom. I mean, you have to. The New Bible by Tom Likas. By Tom Likas. Exactly. That's what we're going to call it. There you go. Tom, it's Lori on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. How are you doing, Tom? I'm okay. I, I do really want to know. I'm okay. Good. Hey, I'm calling you. I need your opinion. I hear you give opinions all the time, and people follow, and they call, and they say they're happy. So I'm about to get married. And I want to know what you think. Um, about 10 years ago, I uh, spent some time as a well-paid escort. And When you say escort, dear, are you talking about being a prostitute? Absolutely. All right. Because, you know, some people actually try to claim that they're nothing but escorts. Oh, hell no. Um, anyway, should I tell my future husband this? Now, I've got a handful of friends that know about this. No one in my family, anything like that. But about half of them say, no way, you don't need to tell him. You don't know every job he had before you guys got together. You don't know everything he did. Well, if he was a, if he was a gigolo, you'd want to know. Well, I, you know, my natural inclination was to say, yeah, I think this is something I need to tell him. I'm pretty sure he's going to be okay with this. I, I really believe he loves me for who I am now. That was 10 years ago. We've only been together two years, so, you know. Well, he might not. He might uh, He might not like it, but uh, yeah, guess he what? He might not. Well, if he so found it. out after you got married and had a kid, he might really, really not like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're, well, I mean, that's the direction I was leaning. Was, you, I uh, think you're better off finding out now because too many people know. Right. Well, yeah. About four people know. That's so too many. I I think that... I, I was leaning your way, my uh, way. Also, the right way. Also, I think in order to have a good relationship, you need to have intimacy. And uh, I, as a man, I really don't like being with women who uh, have all these secrets that their girlfriends know that I don't know. I, I have no interest in that. Okay, so let me ask you. If you were going to be getting married and, and the, the woman said, i got to tell you something, ten years ago, I just, for the fun of it, that's the reason I did it was I wanted to see what it was like. And then I'm like, oh, my God, these stupid, sweet old men are willing to pay $600 for this. So I did it for a while. And so if your girlfriend, fiance, whatever, said to you, Tommy, baby, I did this about 10 years ago, how would you react? I'd have a problem with it. But that's me. Would you? But that's me. But why? 
Tell me why. Uh, uh, simply because I would be concerned that other people would find out about it, and I'm a public figure. And no, 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 no. Okay, okay. He's not a public figure. No, nah, you asked me. Uh, you didn't ask me how he would feel. You asked me how okay. I would feel. All right. So now, he, uh, he can go either way. If you weren't a public figure, would you still feel the same way? Uh, not as much, but uh, it would bother me. Sure, it would. Okay. Sure, it would. Now, if you told me you slept with 50 guys, that wouldn't bother me so much. <laughs> really? Yeah. But if I because at least you were sleeping with people out of a need you had. You needed to get laid, and you did. <laughs> well, I needed the money. Yeah, but, yeah, but you didn't need a 68-year-old guy with dentures breathing on you. <laughs> well, he wasn't quite that old. Yeah, uh, well, you know <laughs> what I'm talking about. I do, baby, I do. And, um... Okay, well, I mean, you you definitely, that's the way I was leaning, and... I, I think the best thing you can do is to tell him and hope for the best, and, by the way, if he's not comfortable with it, he's not the guy for you. Absolutely. That's, that's what I said. I said, if he can't handle this, then that means he doesn't love me unconditionally, because unconditionally means no condition. By the way, nobody no loves, no, by the way, dear, nobody loves you unconditionally. That's a that's well, fake. I love my dad. You love me unconditionally. Well, I, yeah, on the condition that you stay at the other end of the phone. <laughs> that's right, baby. And that's a condition. But no, no, but seriously, like, uh, for example, when people talk about unconditional love, what are they talking about? I mean, like, if I take a hammer and hit you on the head, you would have to still love me because you love me unconditionally. That's true. If I lock you out of the house for three days and don't let you in, you have to love me anyway because you love me unconditionally. There are conditions. And the You're condition right. is generally that somebody treat you uh, with respect and treat you That's nicely. Absolutely true, and I, that was a poor choice of words on my part. But well, I, I, I only point out because lots of people use that term, and right. even even your dog doesn't love you unconditionally. If you abuse him, he'll bite you. Yes, yes, I agree. And so, right, I bottom line is I do want to know how he feels about this because I think that I would always be living with the fear that you know, someone might tell him, and then what? You know, I guess That's my right. biggest fear is having him absolutely blow off the handle and, you know, spread it around and, you know, tell family and things like that. That's probably my only real fear about the whole thing. Well, the thing is, if he if he starts spreading it around, the, the relationship's over and it's irrelevant. Well, right, but I mean, then a whole bunch of people would know. Of course, then I could always use the thing, well, I broke up with him and he's mad so he's spreading oh, By the way, do you know about like, his family? Are they close to your family? Are they close to your friends? I mean, if the whole family knew about it, who else would find out about it? Oh, well, I mean... That you know. Um, probably, you know, probably a lot of people. I mean, I mean do you really care if his grandmother knows that you were a hooker? Probably not his grandmother, but my grandmother I would care. Well, his grandmother wouldn't talk to your grandma. no. No, no, no. I'm yeah. What I'm saying is, if he got mad and just decided to call up my whole family and go, do you know what your cousin, your sister, your daughter, whatever did? You know, I I, I don't see him as being that way. I really don't. I'm hoping that he won't be because because I'm I'm pretty sure now I've got to go ahead and tell him. So yeah. Well, yeah, but believe me, dear. I'll be here available if you need me to make the call with you. I will. Oh, would you? Of course. <laughs> I bet that would be, that'd be some good airtime, wouldn't it? It would be great. And uh, not only that, but I'd be here. I'd be your rock of Gibraltar. Would you be? You'd be my big daddy, huh? Absolutely. I'll be here to uh, pick you up when, you, when you're down. I'll, I'll be here to help you pick up the pieces if, if things don't go well. Well, I'm kind of thinking this isn't the kind of thing, I mean, uh, you know, short of Maury Povich or Jerry Springer, I don't really think this is the kind of thing to do publicly over you the You wouldn't phone. give it to them, would you, please? Oh, God. You know the best place to go. You are. If I was going to do it publicly, you'd be it, Daddy. I promise. Okay, but good. I think this is probably the best thing to do, uh, sitting down quietly, uh, you know, at home kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Just remind him of the big benefit. He hasn't had to pay a penny. Joe on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Papa. Long time, third time. Thank you so much. Hey, I work for a large... Uh, the largest telephone communications company in the world, and uh, I wish you were the head of HR or operations, because all these women here are always taking pregnancy leaves, leave of absences, and it's just really getting sick of it, because i got to do all the work for them. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, it's outrageous, and do you get paid extra to do all that work? No, sir. No, you don't. So they work less than you do, you get paid the same, and they get paid uh, the same money to be there or not be there. Right, and they get paid for not being here with leave. I thought uh, gender discrimination was illegal. And yet, this is perfectly okay with everybody. 
You know, and, and then uh, and then they, the women here don't believe that uh, the, the top 100 women in the Fortune 500 uh, companies are, are, are cute. I told them that there's not even one. Yeah. Okay. Is there a website I can check this out at? Yeah, if you go to uh, Fortune Magazine, uh, fortune.com, uh, you can also reach it on AOL, keyword Fortune. Uh, they have the Power 50, it's called. And you can see the 50 most powerful women in American business, along with photographs of them. And I challenge anybody to try to have a sexual fantasy about any of these uh, 50 broads. You wouldn't even do one with a, a tall pack of beer or something? No, 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 not even. It's pretty bad when Oprah's the hottest looking chick on the list. Wow, that's pretty bad. Hey, Tom, are you going to be at uh, Cinco de Mayo at uh, Camacho's again this year? I'm hoping I am. I, uh, we haven't announced that yet. Uh, you know, we've been there on Cinco de Mayo for several years, and uh, we, we want to do that again in the city of industry, and I'm hoping we will. I haven't missed one, and one of the guys here is going to go with me, and, and he's the one that let me go last year. Tell the guys what that party is like. Oh, it's... I'm sorry. It's awesome, man. It is the best. It's better than, than Disneyland. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. Let's say hello to Rick on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom. Yes, Rick. Uh, great, great listening to you. Long-time listener, and I know you have the right idea, especially about women. Thank you. Like you, I'm, uh, I'm a little older than you. I'm 52, former pro boxer out of L.A., and uh, I've got to say something that really is kind of disappointing here. You know, I know a lot of us Anglos and stuff, have, have, and, and I don't want to make this a racial thing, um, have got the wrong idea. They've gotten really buried by women. And uh, as a guy who's been married three times myself, uh, uh, you know, I, 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 everything you say is right down the line. Um, earlier, uh, oh, a couple hours ago, there was a caller and uh, Latino. Yeah. And these guys, one thing that I've always really admired at Latinos is they, they, they're men with, with their women. Yeah. And, uh, um, and this, it, 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 the one guy, he just found a certain weakness about him that, uh, really was disappointing. And, uh, it, you know, believe me, he, uh, he was thanking you for giving him the, you know, what to, uh, do what he had to do. But, uh, I think personally, Tom, that uh, he should have just known by instinct he just followed his culture a little bit greater. And uh, like I say, I hope this isn't in any way meant because I, as a guy who has fought um, 12 world champions, or as a sparring partner, I should say, for 12 world champions, including some of the greatest, uh, the Latinos are the best in the world of boxing. Yeah, well, yeah, the, right. the, the Latino community are, are some of our biggest supporters. Forty percent oh, okay. of our audience in Los Angeles is Latino. Oh, it wouldn't surprise me. And 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 the fact is that uh, what happens culturally with a lot of these guys, and I, mm -hmm. I I I understand it, is that they're kind of living a bicultural life. So they 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 may have been born in Mexico, or their parents may have been born in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Living here, they start to uh, get into the American ways and start to become pussified and politically correct. Right. And that they forget uh, the great tradition and culture that 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 is available to them, and uh, I think that um, uh, many Latino men are hardwired uh, mm -hmm. to uh, uh, to do the things that we have to teach American men to do, uh, and then many have become uh, polluted by the American culture of uh, a pussification. Mm -hmm. Are you looking to start your own business? Millions of brothers have turned to eBay to escape the rat race. Become your own boss and get the Power Seller Research eBook. It's a comprehensive, step-by-step -step guide that explains how to start an eBay business. The website is PowerSellerResearch.com. Again, that's PowerSellerResearch.com.